In our discussion on the gas exchange process that takes place inside the alveoli of our lungs, we said that the partial pressure inside the alveolar space is much greater than the partial pressure inside the capillaries of our lungs. And that's precisely why oxygen will move down its pressure gradient from the alveoli of the lungs and into the capillaries of our lungs. Now, the next question is, what exactly happens to our oxygen as soon as the oxygen arrives in the blood plasma of the capillaries? Recall that blood plasma consists predominantly of water and that makes our blood plasma a polar substance. Now, diatomic oxygen as it exists in our blood in the atmosphere is a nonpolar substance. It's a, it's a nonpolar molecule and that means it's hydrophobic. It will not easily dissolve in our blood plasma. So how exactly do we solve this problem? Well, basically our red blood cells carry a special type of transporter protein of carrier protein known as hemoglobin. And what hemoglobin does is it picks up these oxygen molecules and it carries and it protects those oxygen molecules from the hydrophilic environment. So basically hemoglobin consists of four polypeptide subunits. So this is what the hemoglobin uh, the hemoglobin protein actually looks like. We have subunit one shown in green, subunit two shown in purple, subunit three shown in brown, and subunit four shown in orange. Now notice that within each one of these subunits, we have a hydrophobic section right inside. So these red sections basically are the heme groups. They're a prosthetic group that are found within each subunit. And each one of these heme groups, so we have one, two, three, four, each one of these contains a single iron atom. And this iron atom can bind oxygen via an oxidation reduction process. So the iron is capable of changing changing its oxidation state via a redox reaction and that can bind our oxygen. Now, one heme group can bind a single diatomic oxygen molecule. So that means because we have four heme groups in a single hemoglobin, a maximum of four diatomic oxygen molecules can be carried by our hemoglobin. So we see that as oxygen diffuses across our respiratory membrane from the alveoli and into the capillaries in the lungs, our red blood cells pick up our oxygen and inside the red blood cells, the hemoglobin then picks up the oxygen and a single hemoglobin can carry a maximum of four oxygen molecules, one in each one of these four heme groups. Now, when our hemoglobin is fully saturated with oxygen, we call it oxyhemoglobin, but when the hemoglobin isn't actually carrying any oxygen, in that case, we call it deoxyhemoglobin. Now, one important property of hemoglobin, one important property that hemoglobin actually exhibits is something known as positive cooperativity. Now, what exactly is positive cooperativity? Well, when one oxygen molecule is taken up by the hemoglobin, it causes a conformational change. It causes a change in the three-dimensional structure of the entire hemoglobin. And as the structure changes, it makes it much more likely to actually pick up other oxygen molecules. So as soon as our deoxyhemoglobin picks up a single oxygen, it changes its shape ever so slightly and it changes the shape in such a way that it makes it much more likely to pick up other oxygen molecules. Likewise, when our hemoglobin is fully saturated with oxygen and one of those oxygen molecules actually dissociates that dissociation process creates a conformational change in the hemoglobin that causes it to be more likely to dissociate the other three oxygen molecules and this process this type of behavior of hemoglobin is referred to as positive cooperativity
So the question is, what will make our hemoglobin actually release an oxygen? Well, recall that oxygen always spontaneously and naturally travels from a high concentration of oxygen to a low concentration of oxygen, from a high partial pressure of oxygen to a low partial pressure of oxygen. And we'll see that's exactly what happens when the hemoglobin actually reaches the tissues and organs of our body. Now, by the way, the way that we designate partial pressure of oxygen is PO2, where P is the partial pressure and O2 is our oxygen. So, we know what happens to our oxygen when the alveoli basically release that oxygen into the capillaries, but what happens to our oxygen as the hemoglobin and the red blood cells carry that oxygen along our blood vessel system to our tissues and organs of the body. So as hemoglobin carries oxygen in the red blood cells and within our blood plasma of the blood vessels, it protects the nonpolar water molecule from the polar cytoplasm of the red blood cell and the polar plasma of our blood. And what that means is our hemoglobin keeps the oxygen protected and it keeps the oxygen comfortable within that hydrophobic section of the inside of our hemoglobin. So remember the outside of the protein is polar, but the inside of the protein where we have the oxygen is a hydrophobic portion. So it's nonpolar and that's why oxygen can reside comfortably within these four sections of our hemoglobin. Now let's suppose we take a small cross section of our capillary. Let's suppose this is some capillary inside our blood system and this outside portion is basically the area where we have cells of some particular tissue. Now these are the red blood cells and inside these red blood cells we have a bunch of these hemoglobin and these hemoglobin carry the oxygen. Now as the red blood cells travel, let's say from this side to this side, inside the blood plasma we have a relatively high concentration of oxygen and so the partial pressure of oxygen inside our capillary will be relatively high compared to the partial pressure of oxygen inside the cells of our tissue. Now, why would the partial pressure inside the tissue be low? Well, that's because the cells inside the tissue continually use, let's say, glucose in the process of cellular respiration to actually break down glucose and form ATP molecules. And in the process, they use up oxygen in the electron transport chain and they produce carbon dioxide. Now, as they use up oxygen, that decreases the concentration of oxygen oxygen in the cells of the tissue and that therefore decreases the partial pressure of oxygen in our tissue. And that's exactly why we have this difference in pressure. Now because oxygen will always move naturally from a higher partial pressure to a lower partial pressure as our red blood cells move along our capillary, our hemoglobin will unload our oxygen, the oxygen will dissociate and as one oxygen dissociates it, it makes the other oxygens more likely to dissociate and this is positive cooperativity and we can plot something called the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve on the following xy axis where the x axis is the partial pressure of the oxygen within our tissue and our y axis is the percent saturation of hemoglobin so we have from 0 to 100 and from 0 to 100 and the units of our x-axis are millimeters per mercury. So as the, red, uh, as the red blood cells travel along our capillary, the hemoglobin unloads that oxygen, the oxygen moves 
through our cell membrane into the blood plasma and then it travels into the tissues and into the cells in the tissue where it is picked up by other molecules, other proteins within those tissue cells. So the tissue and organs of our body have a low partial pressure of oxygen about 40 millimeters per mercury of mercury because there is a higher concentration of oxygen, a higher partial pressure of oxygen in the capillaries, hemoglobin will dissociate uh, oxygen and it will move the oxygen into the tissues of our body. And if we plot the percent of hemoglobin saturated with oxygen versus the partial pressure of oxygen, we get the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, which is shown by the following following blue curve. Now notice the blue curve has an S shape. This is known as a sigmoidal shape and the reason it is a sigmoidal shape is because of this positive cooperativity behavior of hemoglobin and we'll see why that's the case in just a moment. So let's examine and let's try to describe and understand what this curve actually tells us. So let's begin with the alveoli of our lungs. We know that in the alveoli of our lungs, in the alveolar space, the partial pressure of oxygen is about 105 millimeters of mercury. And that means inside the alveoli, we're going to be at about this position along our X. And if we find the corresponding value along the Y, this graph tells us that about 98% of all the hemoglobin in the capillaries of our lungs will be fully saturated with our oxygen. And that makes sense because the entire point of hemoglobin is to pick up our oxygen within the capillaries of our lungs. So because of the high partial pressure of oxygen within the alveoli, our hemoglobin in the red blood cells will easily pick up our oxygen. And so that 98% or about 98% of, of hemoglobin will will be fully saturated with oxygen within the alveoli of our lungs. So in the alveoli of the lungs, the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar space is about one of five millimeters of mercury. Therefore, most of the hemoglobin is saturated. Now notice if we examine this curve, within this region of the curve, we have a relatively flat slope. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, this flat slope basically means that even if our partial pressure inside the alveoli drops to below 105 milliliters of mercury, most of that hemoglobin will still be fully saturated. So even if we go from, let's say, 105 to about 80 millimeters of mercury inside the alveoli of the lungs, most of that hemoglobin will still be able to pick up our oxygen. And that is an important point because in the lungs, our hemoglobin must be able to pick, uh, pick up that oxygen to carry it to the tissues of our body that require the oxygen. So the flat curve tells us that even if the partial pressure in the alveoli drops, hemoglobin will still be pretty much saturated. Now let's move on to point number two. Now within our, within our tissues, if our tissues aren't active, if we're not actively exercising, then our partial pressure of oxygen inside the tissues on average is about 40 millimeters of mercury. So we're about somewhere right here. Now, if we check out the corresponding Y value, we'll see that the percent saturation of hemoglobin at that partial pressure drops. Now, what does that mean? Well, that basically means when our red blood cells carrying the hemoglobin arrive at the tissues, that hemoglobin, some of that hemoglobin will unload 
that oxygen and the oxygen will readily transfer to the tissues as a result of that difference in partial pressure and so what this graph tells us is our percent saturation will be somewhere in the 70s which is lower than what it is within our lungs within the lungs it's about 98 percent because most of that oxygen is picked up but within the tissue, we begin the process of unloading so the hemoglobin, some of it dissociates the oxygen. And so now, not all of it is fully saturated. So in the tissues of our body, the partial pressure of oxygen is about 40 millimeters of mercury. This means that hemoglobin will unload some of that oxygen and it will move from the blood and into the tissue cells down its partial pressure concentration gradient. Uh, partial pressure gradient. Now, if we begin to exercise, if, we are, if our tissues are exercising, then what happens is the pressure, the partial pressure inside the tissue drops even more. So let's say now it drops to 20 millimeters of mercury. Now, because of this sigmoidal curve, we have a very steep uh, slope. And what that means is a very small change in partial pressure will cause almost all of that hemoglobin to fully unload its oxygen. And that will ensure that all the oxygen is readily delivered to the exercising and active tissue. So on this side of the curve, we see that a small drop in pressure will basically unload most of that oxygen. But on this side of the curve, we see that we could basically experience a relatively large change in pressure, but our oxygen will still take up our hemoglobin will still take up the oxygen and this is important because on this side we are within our lungs and on this side we are within our tissue so when we're in the lungs we want to make sure that even if we have a drop in pressure the hemoglobin can still actually bind that oxygen but within the tissues we want to make sure that even if there's a slight drop in the partial pressure of oxygen inside our our tissue we want to make sure that tissue receives that oxygen and so we have a drop in our slope and that basically means that the hemoglobin will unload all of that oxygen and give the oxygen to the tissues of our body